Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So I guess I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Emma Hewitt. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to cross votes in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform the present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, uh, guided meditation, angel oracle cards and hypnosis to help women who feel who feel lost get re clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a several several transformational packages to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show covers covers various themes of your journey, including a, a guided meditation, an angel card reading, with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest Emma Hewitt will be sharing her story and how we can take inspired action to a path of alignment. Now, Emma Hewitt is a tarot and Lenormand reader and Reiki master and teacher. And after 20 years, she's put her career as a youth theatre director on hold and set up her own business, providing card readings and healing services in South East London. She's also working as a multidisciplinary artist and runs drumming circles, so very busy. She's also just launched the Earth Angels Network on Instagram. Now, Emma went from having no job or income and being in a mental health crisis in April 2021, we all know why that is, to manifest in two months a thriving tarot card reading and healing business with over 1,300 Instagram followers, leading women's circles, creating an Earth Angels Network and working as an artist. Now, this process happened one step at a time. Um, by Emma following the path of least resistance, going with the flow, acting on the inspirations that came to her, trusting the process and healing her divine masculine and feminine. Now with testimonials such as, I love the session I had with Emma. I found her really intuitive and she provides guidance and supportive, encouraging way. She helped me see situations that were troubling me in a different light, which she always did with respect and care for my own life choices. So without further delay, hello, Emma, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, Ray. I'm so well today. Thank you so much for having me here. It's lovely to be here um, and to share some of my story. Um, that was really... Yeah. That, yeah, that was really great to hear my introduction. It still <laughs> surprises me because it's still all so new. Um, how far I've come in such a short time so that's uh yeah so that's sort of in re-inspired me and this is why I was so delighted to be invited to come and speak today because I just really wanted to share some of the things and ways and the things that happened to me to get myself back into alignment and living the life of my dreams basically and I was just I I'd love to share the things that I happened to me um, and hopefully it will inspire some other people just to notice what's going on, because I think that's like the underlying theme of what I'm going to talk about is that um, I was really guided by the signs and synchronicities that were coming to me and the guidance that was coming to me as to what to do next. Um, so I guess that's a great. I'm just going to launch in now and just. Uh, no, not yet. You're not. Oh. Because before we actually get into this fascinating conversation, I do want to remind everyone that, who's watching that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Emma and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So sorry to interrupt you, Emma, but why don't you actually tell us more about your journey and how we can recognise those signs, synchronicities and inspirations to go where the flow is? Yeah, so um, so I guess I might start at the bad start at the bad bit. <laughs> yeah, let's get the bad bit out of the way. <laughs> so yeah, I was in a real pickle. Um, well, actually, it seemed like a bit of 
guidance that I got and it felt like I was making the right decisions for me because I we sold I uh so a bit of backstory was that I was in a, a sort of toxic and fairly abusive relationship for about 13 years um, and we split up coming up to four years ago now but we still had the house together and we've got children as well so um, I was in the house for what, three years and then we got around to selling it we managed to do that during uh, the Covid crisis so we got sold the house so great and I managed to find a really amazing um, place to live which again was something that came that i yeah that came to me like I manifested it I was like absolutely delighted we did a white dispatcho at the end of my shamanic training course and I drew a picture of my flat and my flat came to me I was like walking around it going I can't believe this is the place that I get to live I was like I just couldn't believe my eyes so yeah so all that happened and I felt really positive, but I was like, had this big revelation because um, I talked to somebody and said, oh, should I, she was like, what are you going to do? Because I lost my job in September and I didn't, I wasn't getting back into work and nobody was hiring people in my field. And it was just, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I was really feeling like I wanted, because I'd already done my Reiki one and two, and I really felt like I'm a Reiki healer and that's what I should be doing. But I was, con I just couldn't do it it was like I only had to do find a place get the insurance and advertise that was all I had to do and I just couldn't do it I was so blocked um and then we sold the house and I moved and then I was just like somebody said what are you going to do and I was like oh I really fancy the idea of moving to Froome where my sister lives and then I was kind of like well why don't I just do that <laughs> just like I'm not tied to this house anymore and I can just take the kids and I'm just going to do it so I told my ex that's what I wanted to do, but he was really um, very unhappy. He looks after the children half the time and he's living in London as well. And he was really unhappy with this. And we decided, well, I was just like, they, we were advised to go to mediation. And that's where it all kind of fell down, really, was because I'd really cut him out of my life as much as I possibly could and like going into the mediation session and having him there just really triggered off all my victim mm. um, thing I was just right back in the drama triangle he was saying no 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 you can't get what you want I was really stuck it was it had been locked down I'd been doing homeschooling I was utterly depleted and I hadn't really realized how bad it got I think we probably were all in that state of just like just have to keep going and then I got to this point, it was like, if I wanted to leave, we had to go to family court. And I was just, I had, he broke, I was just broken. I just didn't have anything left in the tank. It was, it was awful. And it was like a PTSD reaction that I was getting because it was like him saying no. And because we'd had the mediation, then in my head, what I was doing was like having arguments with him in my head all the time. So it was like, and everything I did or every move I made, he was there going, that just proves you're a terrible mother. And that's, that's, like, that's so it was sort of just like, I just felt like I had no choices and that I was sort of really depleted and like the, best thing that I did was really to get um to call for help you know to say I need help to my sisters and I think this has been like the massivest bit of learning on my journey is to ask for help when I need it it's just to ask for help when I need it I, I don't even know why I hadn't done that before but I think we'd all kind of like just we're just like I just need to knuckle down and get on with it and I can do that and I think there's a load of history from all sorts anyway so I kind of did uh yeah just had a big I call it my lockdown meltdown it was quite severe but my sisters were like super amazing and stepped in um and looked after me came and visited me I went to stay with one of them and that really got me on a really good path. And alongside that, I just properly called in the help, you know, the big guns, the help. I got, I got therapists, I got, I booked myself in because that suddenly like you could move around the country. We were visiting like my sisters down in the Southwest England as much as we could. And I was taking the kids. So um, 
we could all get the support that we needed and um so yeah so I was really calling in the help and then I was just like I need to do nice things for myself so I booked myself loads of like the courses that I wanted to do I wanted to do my Reiki masters so I booked that and I booked to go and make another drum with the amazing lady that booked a drum and it was sort of like a retreat thing and so I gave myself all these like treat things to do which were actually insane just go use that word but it was really powerful healing because when I was doing my Reiki masters I actually um was able to stay with my Reiki teacher and it was just a one-to-one -one and it was like all the stuff was lifting and coming out as I was going through all the achievements and placements and um it was it was really a really healing experience because it was like to be with another person this like out of the isolation and to be with another person that could hold me and my stuff and that I could hold me and my stuff and it was sort of like this gradual um process of kind of like coming back to myself reminding myself of my strength and my power but I still didn't have a clue what I was doing and I was still really really blocked around setting up this Reiki business it still wasn't happening like nine months later <laughs> just like what's going on and then at half term um so that was what uh, when may end of may and um i managed to get an afternoon off uh we went to stay down in the southwest england in Froome, and i got an afternoon off i took my kids to my parents for the day and then i went to Gloucester, my favorite place in the whole world which i know has a special place in your heart as well which is tell wells garden in uh, Glastonbury and it's such a magical place and it's always had such a magical effect on me and really like brought me so much like peace and uh, clarity so I went there for the whole afternoon and I went in the shop and I bought some uh, Magdalene oracle cards like I was really cool to all the Mary Magdalene stuff I was so cool to it and that, the question in my head was like what am I doing what um what am i doing in my life <laughs> I was really like what am i doing i was like i can't go to Froome. i can't move to Froome. i can't you know i'm not setting up my reiki business like what what am i doing what should i do so i pulled uh so i did myself a little three card reading in the gardens and um and that was and that one of the messages in that reading part of it was let it go and i had a little cry and let a lot of feelings out and that was amazing and the other message in it was kind of like go with the flow go with the flow and what and as that kind of sunk in over the following week or so um i was just oh no because when i was there so this is the really <laughs> is a really cool bit was that when I was there I just kept getting this so this voice was coming in my head and it kept sort of saying theta healing theta healing theta healing and I was just like okay theta healing and that was reminding me that when in September I've been to wellbeing day and um, in Kent um and and somebody did some theta healing stuff and I was like I need to do that. So I already had that thing, but because of everything that happened in the year, I had a, I'd totally forgotten all about it. But in my head was like this beta healing. And then I even have a dream about it. And then I was like, okay, I think, <laughs> I, think yeah. I need to do theta healing. So I looked up, um, I looked up uh, courses and theta healing. And three weeks later, there was a theta healing course in London, which was just like central London, one train journey so easy to get to um and i was like this is what i was supposed to do this is what i was meant to do in september my intention was to spend the year doing training and getting all of my training lined up like this is what i'm supposed to be doing so i booked myself on oh sorry there's some <laughs> drilling going on right it's okay here. it happens um so uh, yeah, so I put myself on the Theta Healing course, I put myself on an Angelic Reiki course, I put myself on the Drumming Reiki course, because these were all things that I'd really wanted to do and were really kind of calling me. Uh, and then I went on the Theta Healing course and that were, I have to say, that was an absolute turning point. Like my intuition, the guidance 
came that came was absolutely spot on because I think on quite a lot of levels like on one level there was a lot of in the process of going through the course there was an awful lot of clearing like pulling out old beliefs and putting in new ones and but just the experience of being like there were five women in a room doing this bit and it was just after having been in lockdown and this isolation to be there and I'd done so much inner work I hadn't realized how much inner work I'd done during the time when I hadn't really been seeing very many people and it was like suddenly in this space with these people I just felt like really confident and I was like oh that's a bit different and then I was like offering to give people two of the women Reiki in the lunch time and I was doing all of that and I just felt totally in my element and I just loved the process especially the digging for beliefs work I just was just like oh my gosh I was born to do this it's su it was such a natural thing I just knew intuitively I was like empathically sensing what's happening in other people's bodies in my body and it was just like oh my gosh this is it this is it this is what I should be doing um but the teacher was like you need to do the next level before you can kind of practice professionally just doing theta healing but she said whatever you do will be healing and that kind of really landed in me I was like I'm not quite sure what that means but I know that means something that means something significant and then a few days after that I finished my tarot uh, readers course and then someone sent one of my friends who I'd done some practice readings on who'd loved them and was really positive really really positive reviews um, and he sent me some feedback and just said like you're really good at that and I was just like that's it. <laughs> it this is what this why don't I just do that like this is really I know that I'm I'm a natural like I was naturally um able to do the theta healing like I'm naturally able to do um tarot card readings and for the same kind of reasons that the guidance just comes to me and then I'm able to sort of pass it on and so I was just like well, I'm just gonna do that and then um yeah and then just it's it just went one thing after another from there just like bits of guidance and one step so it was really was like just one step at a time and it was like the next thing and then the guidance came to ask the local pub if I could do tarot readings at the local pub and I went down there and I talked to them at the time I was really just like oh, I don't know if I can do this but then do you know it was two months later before I got to do it and I did it last weekend and that because I've gone do you know, it was like everything's coming in to tell me what I need to do to do the next thing. So I'm really trusting it. And and all wonderful things happened. I'm that getting the Instagram following of a thousand followers in a month, like that is beyond my wildest dreams. I was just like, can't believe, can't believe this has happened. Like it was such like massive validation and real uh, do you know. And, the, and I think the other thing about it is to do with building a community that as I was going through this process of kind of like all these Instagram followers kind of seeing what I was doing and coming in, I was just like, oh, wow, this is a community. And I think there was something that at the beginning of my spiritual awakening, which happened just after I set up um, with my ex-partner, um, I, I was doing transcendental meditation which actually was turned out not to be the best thing for me because it was a bit de bit upper chakra and I really needed a lot of lower chakra yeah but, more um, grounding. <laughs> so, so much and then one of the things that came through when I was kind of in a bit of a theta healing upper chakra state was that I was a leader and I was so shocked and scared and surprised by that um at the time because uh, I didn't have any grounding I was in a really unstable place but it's sort of like now this is what's coming in that I've uh, been offered an opportunity I've been uh, joined the Tarot community on Clubhouse and now I'm running a room there teaching Lenneman's cards so it's sort of like and now I'm thinking oh, I'd love with a pub I'd love to set up like a tarot practice group and have people come and practice tarot and I can teach them some tarot skills and and with the women's circles as well that again was 
I've been wanting to do that all of lockdown. I was desperate to drum with women. And there's a park right outside my front door. And I was like, please, can someone come and drum with me? But I kind of asked the wrong people. And in the end, I asked the drumming group that I'm part of and um, and a friend. And there were, it was just the three of us who ended up being there in the end. But it was in a really, really powerful drumming circle. And I said, um, so I sort of organised it, but one of the other women who came along, I said to her, I said sort of in this, I, this is what I felt like I was being called in to leave. And she felt the same. So we just, we were like going, I love co-creation. So we started working together on it. And it's been a, such a beautiful, um, a beautiful growing of something that feels really powerful and potent but slow and steady and we're just taking it one step at a time and the women's circles are very very powerful with the energy that's coming in to those so it sort of is do you know what I've been asked to do and to step up to I have I've taken the action and I think part of the masculine feminine thing is that in amongst all of this um I was, I'm on a medicine wheel and my teacher was talking about um, looking at our, the relationship between our divine masculine and our divine feminine. She said like, put them on the couch and have a look at them and see what they look like. And my poor little divine masculine was like a seven, like a really little boy, like a seven year old boy, like very dejected and down and depleted. And my divine feminine was like this carnival dancer, like 19 year old, like. <laughs> Queen B, and she was really looking at divine masculine, like, what? <laughs> what point in you, like a younger brother? And she was like, what's point in you, like? Ugh. And um, I think through sort of seeing that, and then working through some stuff and doing some healing around it, and just sort of acknowledging it. Uh, yeah, the, the because the divine masculine's the action, I think the divine feminine is the intuition, which I was getting absolutely loads of before, a lot of messages, but I wasn't able to do anything about it because I hadn't, my divine masculine was so depleted and dejected and um, not not functioning basically. So I think it was like that, you know, joining together, that they can be a team, they can work as a team now. So the divine feminine is bringing in the intuition and guidance and then the divine masculine is like actually taking action and making it happen um so i think that's yeah so it's just kind of like boom 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 and the other thing that i wanted to talk a bit about was like when to take a pause mm. because sometimes like things have come in like what happened this week was really crazy so um so this quite often happens, like I'll see something. So on um, my old street WhatsApp group, someone said, "What? where can I get some free stuff? And then someone said, do you know, the local Facebook group. So I joined the local. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I joined the local Facebook club, Facebook, I can't even talk, Facebook group. And then, um, and then when I was reading the rules, they said, if you're a business, you can post once. And at the time it was, it, it like, I knew that it, that would be a good place to post, but I knew it wasn't the right time mm. as well. So I just left it. And then the two days ago, I was like, I need to post now. Like it was really, I need to post now on that group. And I just put it all together and just did it really quickly. Um, the next morning I'd had about 15 inquiries, all people saying, I want to book <laughs> and I've had yeah, it's gone a bit crazy. September's booked up now. Which is Excellent. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I feel like that was the time, it, like that was like boom at the time when it would be best received. My intuition and guidance knew that. And now I just feel like I'm walking in a bit of a dream, like things were going really well anyway. And the other thing that happened that was a bit like that was that um, uh, because in in December, I did a I did a painting by scissors workshop, which is like a Matisse like cutting out. And I just signed up to do this workshop just for something fun to do. And it 
and I just absolutely loved it. I was just like, I'd forgotten <laughs> that I'm an artist. I forgot that I was an artist because I did it at university and then I haven't made a single bit of art since then, but because I didn't have the confidence in myself to think that that was something that I could do or that I had the value to do or that I could make work in my life. And because I didn't have anything else going on, I was just like, well, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going <laughs> to try yeah. and be an artist. <clears throat> yeah, like, why not? <clears throat> why not? Why not? Why not be an artist? And I was just like, oh, well, if I'm going to be an artist, then I actually need to make some art. So for Christmas, so the people that I spent Christmas with, some friends I spent Christmas with, I made them all a piece of art for Christmas because I was like, I'm an artist. If I make art, I'm an artist. So I just sort of really put the intention out there. And then I did um I did a course over in January. I did like a course and I was making art nearly every day. I was doing something, and then obviously so home the yeah, all the homeschooling all got too much and again it got put on the shelf but it was always like I need to do it and actually it was at the women's circle that first women's circle someone mentioned a shared art space and I hadn't even occurred to me and then it came up again so someone else mentioned it and then I was going down the road I live near Lewisham and I went past the mother care and it hasn't been occupied since mother care left but yeah. there were some whited out windows and someone had drawn in like written in the white step and I was just a bit like curious about that and I was like I wonder what's going on in there wonder if it's kids and I was like I don't think it's kids and then I went oh, I think it's artists I think artists are in there and then um my friend who's just had a career change as well and he's working as an artist now he went and did a workshop in Woolwich and then put the name of the company the place and I was like oh I wonder what that is so I looked it up and then that's the one that's the <laughs> it was an artist studio and it was the same organization and then I was like I need to I, this is just too weird and I just messaged straight away and said look I'm really interested in having an art space is there one and then I went and had to look around and there was one person who wanted to share because um, I couldn't afford to have a whole art space on my own and then uh, the woman the manager there she said well if that one doesn't work out then maybe I could find someone for you to share another space with and then there's something in me that evening just went I wonder if like the friend who were posted about the space in the big I wonder if they're interested in getting art space so I sent um him a text message and he just got back straight away and said yes I do <laughs> I wanted one and it was like phew. and a week later we're in the we're in the art space and it's like absolutely the best thing for both of us to have that space and to be able to have a space to be to be artists and really live it and since then I've had loads of ideas about workshops that I can run down there and all sorts of stuff so it's kind of like and I know that I can make it happen it's like being the process of trusting the guidance trusting myself knowing that whatever comes in is what's supposed to come in and it just feels like the past laid out I just need to follow it um yeah so I think that was yeah I mean that that's that, that that's such a sort of like full-on journey really you know from from what from what you were going through um to actually to actually where you've got to now um you know where you're where you're actually more independent you're actually more confident you're actually taking action on things because you you balance your feminine masculine um, which I think a lot of people sometimes forget that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're male or female, you have, you've, you've got to have the equal balance of masculine, masculine and feminine. And that was something that came up on last week's show as well, um, was, you know, we, we need to have that, that masculine and feminine balance to be able to move forward. So we have all that intuition, those um, thoughts, those ideas, but we actually put them into action. Yeah. And that because action really is something that sometimes we forget we forget to do or we do too much action, but we don't actually think about it. And and now and I love the way that you followed all the synchronicities, you know, that led to that led to that. You know, I did the same on, you know, when I went on my life changing journey to Peru, you know, that started off with the tarot card reading saying you're going to be going um, on an exotic, you know, you're going to be going some traveling somewhere by yourself, 
you know, Sri Lanka possibly. I look on um, online, Lonely Planet, to see what Sri Lanka is all about. Article on Peru looks really nice. A few days later, Stephen Fry TV program, Peruvian Bears. Oh, maybe there's something in this. Get some brochures. Can't really afford it. Um, oh, mortgage needs to be changed. They muck up. They have to give me extra money. Oh, it's the amount of one of those trips. Better book it. Then, then a, a, a girl I was working with at the time, her grandfather passed away. As she was cleaning out his attic, she came across a Peruvian map and and a, a Lonely Planet guide. So it was again, it's noticing. And I think that's where we sometimes forget to actually follow those synchroni synchronicities and and that we, we kind of like, um, we, we, we see something or we hear something or something comes, but then we don't take, we, we kind of like ignore it. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to let those messages pass us by, isn't it? Or, or be like, oh, is that really? I think there can be an element of doubting it as well. Yeah. And, then you, you know, and you're, you're, good, you're, you're good proof that, you know, you, you didn't really come from that background of you sort of like noticing synchronicities or, or, st or, stuff, like, or stuff like that. But when it did come, you kind of like, tuned into it and you went oh okay maybe there is something with this and then that that took you as you said step by step um on 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 your, on your journey so it's absolutely brilliant and the fact that you know you've actually got clients coming in and and everything just by taking action and listening to um your your inner guidance your inner wisdom and the synchronicities yeah definitely i feel really and that and as the trusts come like the safeties come as well because at the beginning i was just like is where's this going what's going to happen i just had to trust that the next step would present itself and now i can sort of see a bit further back i'm like oh my gosh like look at how it lined ever the universe it feels like the universe just like was taking its time like it had to line everything up and i think that's the other thing to say as well like sometimes when you feel like you're in a really stuck place or it, there's a pause or stuff's not coming to you, then it, it's sort of maybe the light universe is just like lining everything up. So when the guidance comes, like with the healing, it was just like, yeah, that's that's what I need to do. And that it was just three weeks afterwards as well. And that was in, the, that was like a real message that really sunk in. That was like, okay, this move and i think at the time we were looking at the tarot as well and there was like the interference card and it's just like if this comes up there's just you can't it's just never going to happen and i was just like that's what happened to me i was just never going to happen so why keep like banging my head against a brick wall trying to make this happen when i could go down the other road and it's really weird but everything that i wanted for my life in frame i wanted um, to grow a business I wanted to have really lovely friends and support um, I wanted to be able to really get into the healing aspect of stuff and connection with the land and all of that's happened in London it's like I had my wish list be met here which I didn't think was possible but it has so it's sort of like that's the other thing I guess that maybe like know what it is that you want something for don't, yeah maybe like I was very fixated that had to be through and it had to be through and actually my Reiki teacher said do you know very, very kindly like maybe there's another way for it for things to progress and at the time I was just like no I just need to go to through but you know she was she was absolutely right she was absolutely right that I got everything that I needed in London yeah. and actually the possibilities are he do you know there's so many possibilities in London and and the kids can see their dad and keep that relationship and it sort of is just like actually it's better for everyone yeah yeah so in a way yes he was a bit of a pain by saying you can't take the kids to the room but in a way he's kind of like he kind of like did you a favor really uh yeah I love that you're telling that one <laughs> yes no I think it it's interesting isn't it because I think actually the people the people in our lives and the 
like we're the center of our universe and actually everything around us is giving us the signs and stuff we need like somebody like a person might say something which is really a message from you know spirit so it's sort of like that's um that's i'm just paying attention to absolutely everything now <laughs> anything that comes from anywhere i'm just like okay let me really go with that see it so yeah i think it was yeah i think it's uh yeah it was i mean it happened and it it just yeah life took me in the way that it needed to and i learned a big lesson about just like going with the flow that's my mantra now go with the flow where it's easy where there's no resistance where it's just happening naturally that's the path that i'm supposed to be going down don't fight it because that's just hurting me at the end of the day yeah yeah, and, and I think that's something we, we all need to take on board is if something we feel like we're butting against something or it just doesn't feel right, then maybe it's time to just take that step back and look, OK, is there another direction that I'm supposed to be going in? Yeah, definitely. And, uh, definitely. But, yeah, so I think, um, as, you, as you mentioned it, and you do in Judge and Tarot, you know, Normally, um, at this point in the show, I normally ask my guests if they'd like a mini guided meditation or an angel oracle card for themselves and for those watching. But I think that maybe you should pull a card for everyone who's watching. What do you reckon? I would love, I'd love to do that. Um, and the way I read cards is like two cards, two cards together. So I'm just going to yeah. randomly pull and see what the message is. Oh my gosh. The message is uh, stand in your power and follow your passions. So that's the message. Okay, cool, excellent. And we let's see what see what the Roman the Oracle cards have got to say um, with with the, with that message as well. So let's um, have a look now. Of course, um, when I do when I do the Oracle cards, I do it for what you need to know in the present. Um, so they work with past life stuff. Uh, we clear the past and heal the past so we can be fully present. When I do the future stuff, we work with the future so that we're actually not worried about it. So we're, so we're fully in the present. So let's see what Emma. Oh, OK. We actually got three jump out, Woo! which is um, which is interesting. Um, so. Emma, tell me when you want me to stop. Stop. I knew this one was going to actually come. I, I, I kind of I kind of like it's like I think this one is going. Wondrous universe, walk in beauty. Wow. Which is absolutely ties in perfectly with with your message, um, and that. And it is uh, um, basically say, you know, this is a wondrous universe out there. And um, for you, it's the confirmation, you know, that you've noticed the universe, how wonderful, how wonderful it is, you know, and, and walk in your beauty, in your power, um, you know, in, in your light. And for those that are watching, if you're, you know, if you're not already connected with the universe, look at what the universe can offer you. Um, again, those synchronicities and everything. The universe is always wanting to help you. And it is such a wondrous universe out, you know, a wondrous universe out there, you know. And, you know, is as Emma Smith has said, step up, you know, be that powerful you. You are a powerful person and take the steps and see the beauty not just in the world around you but in, in yourself as well so i just love the, i just love the way the synchronicity again the synchronicity of the cards the way they you know your message tarot my cards and they just all of them work, work together and again it's something as you said earlier you know collaboration community so so important now um because we're not isolated anymore um we're we're now all it, it's it's kind of like the universe again is now pushing everyone together or or you know those 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 on the spiritual path you know um even even on the spiritual path i think even with with what happened with with the lockdown communities people looking out for each other but also people working together 
as one. So we're not separate, we're whole again, um, which, which I think is absolutely um, uh, beautiful. So Emma, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Um, I think it's what you were saying, like take the action, take the action. If the inspiration comes to you, act on it because that's going to take you into the path of your power i've felt and as i've walked on that path i've felt more and more powerful i've felt more and more supported by the universe and this is um it's an amazing it's an amazing amazing feeling i just love everyone to have it. <laughs> and and it, and it and it shows you know when, when you're talking it just sort of like is glowing from you which you, you know which is so beautiful um, to, to, to come out. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful and the words of wisdom that Emma has given you, um, you know, has resonated with you. I mean, I know I've, I've, I've found it very insightful with what Emma has had to say. So Emma, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? So my, I'm on Instagram and my, how you can find me on that is it's Salome underscore tarot and Salome's S-A-L-A-M-A-Y. And then on Facebook, I'm Salome Tarot and Healing Arts. And you can find my page on there. And I'm also on Clubhouse, which is uh, Salome Tarot. Okay. I'd love to connect with you. Uh, yeah, that would really make my day if you came and found me. Uh, be really really lovely to connect yeah and what I do is I'll put the links in the uh, comments after the show so um, you can just click on them where did the Salome come from oh my gosh that's a long story <laughs> <laughs> I did um, I've never felt connected to the name Emma that just I, I do, it just doesn't feel like my name I think it's because there's so many of us that there was always someone else around called Emma and I never really identified with it so um, at some point when I was doing my shamanic training I was just like oh I think I need a different name uh, and a spiritual name I wonder what it is and then I went on a journey to Wesker Inca and asked him down in the underworld and he said uh, Salome and it sounded so much like salami and I was just like we're having a laugh you're absolutely having a laugh. My spiritual name's like almost salami. And then, um, yeah, and that was quite, a, but it kind of hung around. And then when I was thinking about a name for the business, it was just really came out. I think it's, I think there's some kind of link to higher self or uh, something, uh, something going on with that name that's really sort of really feels like me and really um, like a spiritual uh connection of who i am so i sort of feel like i could be i i am salome and i am emma um it's all it's all me yeah per absolutely absolutely perfect um so thank you very much emma for um being on the show and sharing your short story which i hope will be an inspiration to all of you watching and thank you for your uh comments um and uh joining with the conversation um today and um so of course you know if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need some extra help finding the meaning of your life and getting clear on your path then i would love to be that guide for you so please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call to find out more about each other and whether or not I think I can help you take charge of your destiny. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime to get guidance and clarity so that you can use it, use it in your current life um to you know to actually get an idea of where you're going and what you're doing and of course there's a couple of other free gifts there as well so again thank you so much emma thank you so much to everyone watching and i would like to invite you to share this video as i'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and if you're watching this on youtube and it feels right and i hope it does um, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to be notified of when the show goes live in the future or to um, to get uh, be the first to know when uh, I post new guided meditations um, that will help you in your life. And I look forward to you all joining me again, same time, same place next week. Um, and again, thank you, Emma. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.